Hey everyone, welcome back. A picker can be the difference between a good rig and a great one. In this video, I want to show you how you can easily create a picker for your rigs using Mansoor Rig. I'm going to use Eugene's rig to demonstrate the process. By the way, this rig is available for free in Mansoor Rig's ArtStation profile. To get started, let's open Block and move to the Picker tab. You'll notice there are a bunch of tools here to help you turn this long and tedious task into a quick and easy process. We will go through all of these in this video. The process starts with opening the Picker Layout camera using this button. Make sure your rig is selected. This NURBS layout will be the guide to the final Picker window creation. All of these guides are called PLGs, which stands for Picker Layout Guide. This main PLG square that you see represents the Picker window frame. So first, we need to decide what size we want our layout to be. Click on the main PLG and adjust the width and height according to your needs. To start understanding how this process works, let's simply open the picker and see the result. As expected, the picker does recognize our character, but the picker is empty. Let's close the picker and adjust the main PLG width and height attributes. Our main PLG frame is now changed. Let's open the picker again and see what changed. The picker window default size has been changed based on the changes we made. So now we see that every change we make within our guide layout will dynamically dictate our picker definition. Let me change the size back to the default settings as these work for this rig. We all know that a comfortable picker comes with a background image for animators to easily understand what each button on the picker represents. So to start our layout creation, we need our background image to guide the positions of the buttons. To load a background image, go to your rig settings and set a body picker image path using the UI, like this. I'd recommend using a PNG image with a transparent background, as well as making sure the image is the same ratio as the picker width and height ratio. I'll load a body picker background I created for this rig. Great, I now immediately see the background image I selected behind my layout, and it fits perfectly. I can now get started with my layout. Mansoor Rig is using a projection method to create PLGs. I'll click the projection perspective toggle to switch to my projection camera. Again, make sure your rig is selected. What I see now is a projection gate that represents my layout frame. When I want to create a PLG, I'll select the controls I want to project, move the camera to a rough position of the controls based on my reference camera gate, and click project. So now a PLG was created, and its position is based on the control's screen space position within the projection camera gate. Let's do this again to make sure the process is clear. I'll delete the PLG I created, move the camera and place the control in a different position within the projection gate, and click project again. Now my PLG is projected in its new place. Great, we have our first PLG. Now imagine its position and shape represents a button within the picker that will select its relative control. So let's see what that looks like. I'll open the picker, make changes, and reopen the picker to see the behavior. Great, so now I have a PLG for the wall control, which I shape to my preference. Once we load the picker, just like an animator would do, a button is generated based on the PLG I created. So now that we know how to create PLGs and adjust their size and position, how do we control the behavior of each PLG-related button? Simply select your PLG and click PLG settings in block. Here you can control the behavior of the button once it's drawn into the picker window. You will notice that a few options here are disabled. We will learn why that is and how we can change that very soon. Let's go over these options. First, the name of the PLG and its related rig control, button color and side, the control group and its type, whether body or facial. The size of the button can be controlled using this UI as well as using scale on the PLG just like we did before. Button text, text color and font. The list of controls that are related to this PLG, or in other words, the control that will be selected when this button is clicked. And lastly, the action script section, which allows you to run any Python script when this button is clicked, whether before the selection is made or after. So why are some of these options disabled? This PLG was created using the projection method, which sets the selected control as the direct relative of this PLG. This means that some options will be dictated by the control relative. The PLG's name, color, group, and controls list are all read from the control relative, hence they cannot be changed. We will soon learn how to create a free PLG, which will have all of these options enabled. Great, so now we know what we need to start creating our layout, which means repeating this process for all controls we want within the picker. I'll create a few so you can see the entire flow, 
as well as understand the useful align utilities within Blocks Picker tab. Right, I have some example PLGs laid out. And why did I create PLGs for the left side only? Well, that is because you can easily symmetrize them using the Symmetrize button. Block will read all the information and attempt to create asymmetrical PLGs for the related symmetrical rig controls. This makes the process much faster. Let's load the picker once again and see what we got so far. We have our body tab initialized with the background image we chose and all buttons generated based on our PLGs. Okay, so why is there a facial tab, and how can we use that? Well, it's just a simple way of dividing the entire rig into two groups, for ease of use. Each module has a facial body toggle within its settings, and its attribute dictates the group of its controls. This attribute can be changed post-construction, in case you need to, using the PLG settings window. For example, let's open our rig settings again, and set a facial picker image as well. Let's zoom in on Eugene's face, and load one of the facial module settings. As you can see, I set this module to facial when I created it. So now let's try and create a PLG for it. First, let's toggle the body face mode of the PLG layout like this. Our mode is changed and our layout is now empty again. Don't worry, you can always toggle the mode back. Your body PLGs are safe and sound. Now let's select the nose control and project it. Let's see the mode toggle again and see the switch. Cool, now let's open the picker again and move to the face tab. Now you can see the background image changes as well as the button layout, based on the settings of our PLGs. So now I want to give my animators a button that selects all finger controls with just a single click. How can I do that? This is where the free PLG comes into play. Instead of using the projection method, let's select our rig and click the create free PLG button in block. A new PLG is created which is not related to any control. Let's quickly position it. So now we can easily go to its settings and manually set its behavior. I'll set its side, color and text and load all finger controls into the controls list. Let's symmetrize it as well and open the picker again. Awesome, I easily created a custom button that selects all of my finger controls. You can use the free PLG in any way that suits you and adjust its behavior based on your needs. Great, I think we covered just about everything. Let's fast forward to a final result and see what the finish picker looks like. Cool, right? I have a dynamic picker generated based on the layout guide I created, and it's fully functional. And now my rig is ready for delivery to the animation team. A few more important notes before we conclude. Documentation about how to create this IKFK switch PLG is in the description. Don't worry, it's really easy. Lastly, you probably noticed that the background image path are absolute. So how we can deliver this rig and make sure that the picker loads with images for the animators as well? All you need to do is make sure that your images are named based on the naming convention, 
and deliver your images next to the rigging scene you deliver, like this for example. The naming convention documentation link is also in the description. As long as the images are delivered next to the rigging scene and named correctly, once a rig is opened or referenced, the picker will automatically try and find these images and use them. Here is an example delivery folder with the rigging scene next to three images, body picker image, facial picker image, and a thumbnail image to be displayed at the top of the picker window. Great, we're all done here. I want to say huge thanks to Makar Maliki for this wonderful Eugene model. Please take a minute to take a look at his ArtStation store, where you can find many more amazing models like this one. I also included a link to our Discord community below, where you can talk rigging with nerds like me, or get some support. If you find these videos helpful, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.